Y254, I'm Robert Osoro. We are still on Mara's sports, considering it is the COVID-19 pandemic that has struck the world of sports into darkness. But we have got some good moments in sports, and we are talking to them after that. You have been actually watching the Bundesliga season so far. It is actually reached March Day 25, and today they are going to play March Day 26. And it is the first league in the world to come back during this coronavirus pandemic. Can it sustain it? That's what we are going to see. Five matches today. Most of those matches, actually all the matches will be played indoors. We are waiting to see how it is going to happen. Joining me here in studio today are people who are working for Action Network for the Disabled here in Kenya. And they are here to talk about how this coronavirus pandemic has affected their industry, considering it is sports for children, for education, and everything that they do. So joining me here in studio now for the fan zone to discuss everything sports is Sharon Ndungu, project coordinator for Action Network for the Disabled here in Kenya. And on my far right is Nancy Nduku from Tennis Kenya. So welcome to Y254, ladies. This segment, we usually have fun for this segment. It is a segment for gossip. It's a segment for fun and we're here to have fun so sharon are you mm -hmm. ready to have fun oh yes i am ah, yeah sure sure welcome to y254 the touchline Thank and you. we have got nancy are you ready to have fun today kabisa kabisa uh -huh. what, what are you going to tell kenyans that they want to know about you that they don't know about you uh, i'd like to tell kenyans that they should embrace sports mm -hmm. it's a it's a good thing to do yeah. to be active in sports mm -hmm. it uh, it helps you uh, replenish your energy and you keep and live a healthy life yeah, yeah. well so welcome to y254 and we're here to talk about action network for the disabled because that is what you are doing for our children outside there for for someone who doesn't know andy action network for <coughs> the disabled sharon tell us what does that group do and what do you entail? Action Network for the Disabled is a non-governmental organization. It's actually a DPO, a disabled person organization that works for children and youth with disabilities yes. in Kenya. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you work with, for what purpose do you work with them? In what area and what categories? Mm, mainly on matters, education and sustainable livelihoods. Uh -huh. And uh, for education, we do this through sports. We promote inclusive education through sports. Mm -hmm. Yeah, simply because sports, it's, um, it speaks in a language that does not um, discriminate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The rule of the game is just the rule of the game. Yeah. So regardless of how I present. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what kind of sports do you usually deal with? I mostly do adaptive sports, like um, wheelchair tennis uh, basketball mm -hmm. uh, sitting volleyball and and also because we don't do uh, just sports for children with disability mm -hmm. and because we're promoting inclusion so we encourage even uh, the teachers uh, mm -hmm. the parents to embrace these other sports yeah. to promote that friendship that inclusivity yeah. so we don't just uh, focus on the games that children with disability can play Mm -hmm. But also, these are the games that these other children play. Mm -hmm. So, just to make them be a little bit inclusive. So, where are you based here in Kenya, and what, which schools do you deal with? You know, some children will be there at home, and today they are seeing you on TV, and they say, "Oh, that's my teacher by there, and she's on TV." Which schools are that, and where are you based? We are based in Kibera, and we work in mostly with public schools. Mm -hmm. Been doing this for quite some time, and uh, during the first phase, we were in six schools mm -hmm. in Nairobi and uh, Kiambu County. Uh -huh. So this time, we, we, there's a project that we were starting in January, mm -hmm. but it was now the, the setback of Corona, mm -hmm. and uh, we are in ten schools yeah. in that particular project. Well, a big one for you there. And then we've got Nancy Nduko from Tennis Kenya, a big organization here in the country. How are you affiliated to Andy Kenya? Uh, I would say we are partners because uh, through them, we can help identify young players who can uh, get engaged to participate in wheelchair tennis. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, 
so far now we've got the COVID-19 pandemic actually here in the country and worldwide and it has affected everybody in the, your area how has this one affected you in this program that you run for the children it's it has affected us in a big way because now schools were closed abruptly and uh, as i said before sports is therapeutic yeah for these children with disability mm -hmm. we use sports to uh, like break down the stigma mm -hmm. so that these children when they can't play together they realize oh this person uh, despite the fact that they, are, they have disability mm -hmm. they can play with us so even in class we can uh, do something together yeah. they can learn just like me mm -hmm. for those without disability they get mm -hmm. to understand them much better mm -hmm. And uh, it's a big blow because now everything has stalled. So there's a setback to all the milestone we had gained. Yeah. So yeah. The, this school, these children are usually primary school children. They are primary school children. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for you, Nancy, as you are a partner to the uh, Action Network for the Disabled here in Kenya, how you, how do you get to know these children, and how do you bring them to tennis, Kenya? Uh, mostly, uh, we visit uh, hospitals mm -hmm. where uh, the, we have the physically challenged. Mm -hmm. uh, we get players from there. We also go to schools and uh, we introduce wheelchair tennis. They mm -hmm. train and we are able to pick potential players yeah. and organize uh, programs throughout uh, the school terms mm -hmm. where we have at least two sessions a week. Mm -hmm. So far we have... Uh, six schools yeah. we have one in mombasa mm -hmm. we have one in nairobi machakos thika kisumu and kakamega yeah yes and what are some of the sports disciplines because w w the, the major one that she has talked about that we know so far is wheelchair tennis is that the only one that you deal with or are there others that you help them with uh, for now, we only have uh, wheelchair tennis, and we've also grown into deaf tennis as uh -huh. part of our program. Yeah. Yes. And so far, how many people do you have in the program for Tennis Kenya for wheelchair tennis and deaf tennis? Uh, deaf tennis, we currently have a team of 16. Mm. And uh, wheelchair tennis, seniors, we have uh, 20. Yeah. And juniors, if we sum up the number of junior players in all the schools, we yeah. are at around 50. Yeah. Yes. Do you have any other partners, or it's only Tennis Kenya that you have as a partner when it comes to Action Network for the Disabled? Yeah, we have other partners yeah. who are uh, supporting the project. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, okay, well, the, the link between us and uh, Tennis Kenya, yeah. once we, as we go to school, we introduce these sports and uh, we let the kids now decide what what sports they want to to engage in. Yes. So from there, as they grow up, because now we are up to uh, a certain level, yeah. we just introduce the sporting activities to that child, mm -hmm. and then now they, they continue. Yeah. So once they, they grow, as they continue, Tennis Kenya picks up, mm -hmm. the ones who are interested in, in like tennis. Yeah. So they, they continue with him. So the, the talent is not just lost at some point yeah. anyway, yeah. It is Y254, I'm Robert Osoro, and I'm, I'm hanging out here today with Sharon Ndung, who is a project coordinator for Action Network for the Disabled here in Kenya, and also Nancy Nduku from Tennis Kenya. And we are talking about how the coronavirus has impacted also sports and the children who are are having disability problems here in the country if you are just joining us you can follow this conversation online at y254 channel on facebook and twitter you can also go to our channels on zuku star times we are channel 54 dstv channel 376 and on signet go tv channel 826 so you can also follow this conversation as we talk about the covid pandemic here in the country so Sharon, when it comes to support, what kind of support do you need in this world? Because the children you are dealing with, people usually, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. people usually don't think they are normal because of the stigma and everything, but in all sense of the world, they are normal children. Yeah. What kind of support do you actually need from us and everybody in the world? 
Well, the kind of support we require from everybody is just to include these children in every sense of the word, like from home. Yeah. Let them be engaged, let, let them participate in decision making, mm -hmm. in everything, in play activities. Yes. You, uh, I can tell you, when I was growing up as a child with disabilities and I went to the school and all through the school life, I, I, I was not able to participate in any particular sport because they felt I am I'm sick, I might get worse, yeah. you see. Like I was, I could just sit at the corner watching other people play and uh, people will bring their sweaters, their bags, nishiki easy. Mm -hmm. So I was not able to participate in any, any yeah. specific uh, game. Mm -hmm. So I came to, when I came to Andy, I started, by the way, I started sporting at Andy. Yes. And I, I, for me, I love swimming. I joined swimming, mm -hmm. and uh, that's when I knew, wow! So I can also get into a pool and do sports. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it brings about um, the feeling of that confidence. Yes. It uh, boosts your self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you just put them aside and they just left there. Yeah that's how you bring them down so when you engage them in everything like in, in decision making in house chores yes yeah it, they you, have to be involved they have to be involved they're, mm. they're not sick they just have a disability yeah yes so we we just request or maybe ask the community to not discriminate them had you already identified some of the children who are going to join tennis Kenya? Uh, uh, oh, well, that is Nancy's question. That is, I think that is Nancy's <laughs> question. <laughs> okay, tell us, Nancy. Yeah, uh, as I said, mm. we had uh, planned to have uh, sessions in mm. some of the schools that they work with. Yeah. And we work uh, with the schools throughout the term, is because they are all together and uh, it's easy to train them when they're yeah. in a team. Okay. But now with Corona and everything, and everything that's happening, there has been no opportunity. Oh, what, what about the role models that they can follow from Tennis Kenya who actually participate in the wheelchair basketball, wheelchair tennis that these children actually can look up to? Can you tell us some of them? Actually, uh, one of uh, our players, who is the top player in uh, Kenya, Jane, mm -hmm. works for Andy and uh, we use her to actually uh, encourage the players when they see her compete and uh, she's there training them they have hope that uh, yes I I have a disability but yeah. I can participate in sport and be a champion yeah yeah and uh, Jane has uh, represented the country at the World Team Cup Championships four times mm -hmm. And wow. wheelchair tennis has just been in Kenya for eight years. Yeah. So you can see there's that opportunity for progress mm -hmm. and for greater achievement. Yeah. Yeah. Others who are out there that we should know about? Uh, Jane, uh, there's Phoebe Masika, uh, there's Asiya Sururu. Yeah. Actually, Asiya also qualified for Tokyo Paralympics yeah. and are rowing. Mm -hmm. So you can see you can engage in various sports. Yes. In the men's team, we have uh, Collins uh, Lumumba, we yeah. have Peter Munuve, we have Rajab Athman, yeah. we have Ita Kentimoy and uh, Shaban Warioba. Yeah. Uh, when, when it comes to your calendar in tennis Kenya, how was it disrupted by this pandemic? Because everywhere in sports, every athletics, football, everyone was disrupted. But when it comes to tennis Kenya and tennis, how was it disrupted from your end? Uh, all competitions were stopped. Mm -hmm. uh, we had plans to send teams out to the country for competition, mm -hmm. uh, various championships across Africa and the world. Mm -hmm. And with Corona and the different country lockdowns, we are not able to send. Mm -hmm. And also it has hindered our training. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we can only focus on next year. Yeah. Yeah. 
Sharon, yes. if there's someone outside there who's watching Y254 The Touchline today and want to get in touch with you guys, how can they do that? Uh, Andy, we are located in Kibera mm -hmm. and uh, you can find us on www.andy.or.ke www mm -hmm. That's our, um, our, our website. Our website yeah. Yeah. Only that you don't have a Twitter. We also, handle. yeah, we, we have a Twitter handle mm -hmm. that is a. Uh, oh, Jane is the one who was supposed to say that. Jane, how are you? We are sorry <laughs> for that. We could not make it to the set here today because of the coronavirus pan. Even here in studio, that's why we are sitting this one meter apart. So, Twitter, Facebook? Facebook is Action Network <coughs> for the Disabled. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Andy at uh, Action Network for the Disabled. Yeah. So, what, are, what, what do you say to people like us who usually think that people like you are not normal? What is that word of advice can you give people like us outside there that we can see you to be people like us in one community and one world? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, there's no one who is, not, uh, who is maybe abnormal, if I may say that. Yeah. We are all normal. It depends with how you engage each and everyone because yeah. they are everybody's able in yeah. a different way. Yeah. So it depends. So uh, that's where we cut you short because the president.